Hello, good day everybody. My name is Yorai Feinmesser. I'm a general partner at the Disruptive AI Venture Capital, investing in early stage AI focused uh, startups. I'm very happy to be here to take part in the Future of AI uh, virtual uh, conference. For me, it's a special occasion because uh, it's my second time. I was part of the first uh, Future of AI took place physically uh, two years ago. And I'm happy to share with you some insights of the Israeli AI investment landscape uh, in AI in early stage, but not only, and share with you some trends uh, most uh, influenced by COVID-19. Uh, some of them are actually here to stay. And then we'll follow on with uh, investor and the founder talk, fireside talk, where both of them uh, are good friends of mine. You're gonna meet them uh, very soon. Uh, we'll talk about the investment uh, and uh, uh, founder uh, point of view and discuss some very interesting uh, stuff. So let's move on. As you all know, first, uh, as you say AI and you say Israel, uh, we know Israel is a major leader in that, uh, in that field. Uh, it is uh, probably the third only to the US and China when it comes to a number of AI companies operating in this uh, industry. Uh, looking at the global index of AI, Israel is the fifth, but very uh, aggressive on the side of uh, ventures and, uh, and startups and leading on that. Uh, and number one, of course, if you are uh, taking it into the per capita uh, measures. So what happened uh, through uh, the year of uh, 2020, the year of uh, COVID, uh, as we say, is actually uh, we saw more than uh, 1,400 1, AI startups raised altogether 6.4 billion uh, US dollars uh, in AI uh, startup funding and uh, took place around uh, 250, 260 uh, funding around. It's a huge industry, it puts Israel in a leading place in the AI uh, ventures. And if we want to see how uh, it goes through the sectors of AI and uh, what are the leading sectors that uh, will probably the lead uh, the industry through the following years. So I think the major, major sector is uh, it's the enterprise sector. We're gonna talk about it in a minute, but the rising one is the one from the healthcare coming out of the COVID-19 influence. And of course, uh, not leaving much behind the FinTech and the automotive and some uh, marked as media, but uh, includes all kinds of uh, uh, perspective and, and imaging and uh, things that are part of the tools that we are going to see all over the industry. Moving forward, uh, let's first emphasize and hold to uh, understanding of the, the trends, the major trends that we, we all familiar with uh, from the COVID-19 uh, influence. First of them is everything is remote, all goes remote first, we know all of the uh, remote work. Our uh, kids and our uh, colleagues are having education in a remote way. And most of our social manners uh, found place in a remote way of, uh, of uh, engagement. And from a similar but a little bit different perspective is that everything uh, goes uh, online. Uh, we consume online. We even uh, consume health in an online manner. Our finance and our uh, services that provide for us are also going uh, online. It leads to a certain understanding that everything is recorded, everything is uh, uh, becoming a data that could help and uh, move forward many things and it accelerates some of the technologies and some of the sectors in, in, in very nerd aspects. So let's take uh, five of those, which I think are most, uh, mostly accelerated uh, the last year because of the COVID-19 influence. Uh, I think the, we can start from the uh, data-driven healthcare. It means that we see a major influence, not only because of COVID-19, it's a, it's a healthcare uh, issue, but also because of the, uh, the, the change in the way that uh, healthcare is consumed. And what we're gonna see there is everything based on data. It means that uh, the engagement with the doctor will be uh, less uh, intimate. It's going to be 
part of uh, uh, data understanding, more personalized healthcare, and of course the sector of drug discovery, uh, which is going to take advantage of the uh, the data collected about uh, patients and but also about uh, drug and medicine uh, creation. And second uh, accelerated uh, segment is the enterprise, what we call a no-code AI. No-code AI is the method of creating models that helps the enterprise with its daily manners. But in that case, we're gonna see many technologies that are involving uh, a no-code scheme that could be built in a way that it is tailored to the organization or to the enterprise and helping with using the data it holds and enrich data to gain his, uh, his targets. Uh, we usually see it in customer success, in uh, marketing, sales and so forth, that all went growing up and scaled up last year, especially because the very easy uh, global and uh, uh, online uh, approach that entered that's, that industry, industry uh, many leads and many actions and uh, a need for AI to be taking a, a front seat here to, to do something with that, with that data and hold, hold the, the story in a, a good perception. Another uh, area is the, the online consumers. We all feel it from our uh, regular life. And we know that uh, consuming went online uh, strongly, mainly because uh, COVID uh, made us all stay at home and uh, retailers had to close their, uh, their businesses and open online stores. So the online consumers has a large influence on the way we consume and the way we want to understand the products we buy and make sure they are the right for us. It also gave push for all logistics and shipping uh, 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 tools in the uh, industry. Two other uh, worth mentioning uh, uh, domains being accelerated are around the, the cyber and the fintech uh, both together. From the cyber perspective, the cyber security, we understand that if people are working from home, so the end, uh, the end uh, point should be uh, uh, protected and it, this gives uh, a lot of push to the EDR industry and looking around the fraud and what happened on that field and we're going to meet the uh, the founder later so uh, crime went online and there are many there is a huge growth of fraud meaning uh, through online manipulations on uh, financial uh, institution, institutions uh, and fraud uh, prevention became a, a leading uh, sector uh, using AI. A more uh, uh, alternated uh, 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 discussion could dig into uh, kind of sectors and I try to elaborate here, what are the main uh, issues in every sector that uh, led to uh, an AI trend? So starting with the digital health, as I said, the patient and doctor are going unconjugated. It means that you get your health, uh, you consume your health, uh, though in a, a personalized, personalized uh, way, but it is uh, with an on, online way, not uh, so conjugated with, uh, with the doctor as the way you used to do it uh, before the COVID-19. And the, the way that uh, a quick pharmacy is being deployed using uh, data-driven uh, methodologies and AI, of course, to drug discovery, to shorten the, uh, the experiments and the clinical trials. And this is the leading, uh, I think, uh, the leading trend uh, in the area of the digital health and the FinTech. So we all uh, see the trading boom. Everybody is a trader. So many algorithm, uh, uh, algo trading and workflow and smart signals uh, provided using uh, all data available and offering it for all traders. SMBs are in stress, so the lending and the banking services are uh, being uh, data-driven, opti uh, optimized, uh, trying to uh, estimate risk and, and allow uh, some risk to the SMBs. And of course, the crime that goes online uh, brings a lot of ways to create fraud uh, through the online channels and then fraud prevention uh, is taking use of AI to fight it. Cyber, as I said, the work from home brings uh, uh, the 
endpoint detection and response and the cloud being uh, large and large and scales up say no more about that so cloud security and cross cloud microservices security is taking place and uh, from the enterprise and the consumers so of course as i said no code uh, ai platforms efficiency and tailored projects are being generic, uh, generically fit and smart management is uh, applied where customer success marketing and sales taking place uh, in consumers the virtual consuming uh, and online shopping brings uh, ethic to personalization and uh, ar and vr so uh, being uh, prepared for many years but now it looks like the time for it uh, to give realism for the for the clients and the consumers Just to give you a head of uh, the year of 2021, so we see um, in January in Israel uh, more than 25 deals, and in February more than 40 deals, and uh, we are very optimistic about the, the future. All companies are taking uh, some involvement with AI and push it forward. I think uh, the most interesting uh, thing to do now is to move forward to our uh, uh, fireside uh, talk with two uh, great uh, friends that will take a uh, participant. Uh, one of them is Gadi Tirosh, my partner from this AI. Uh, the second one is Velter, uh, uh, maybe Gadi and, uh, and Alex, maybe uh, introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, thank you, Arai. Uh, thanks for the opening remarks. It was uh, obviously I heard parts of it before, but coming from you in a comprehensive way was uh, of great value to uh, to me. Uh, my name is Gary Tirosh. Uh, I'm a partner at uh, Disruptive AI together uh, with Arai. Uh, I've been in the uh, Israeli uh, VC world for the last uh, 13, 14 years. Most of them as the managing partner of uh, JDP, uh, a fund that focused on uh, investment in media and cyber and in recent years uh, in artificial uh, intelligence. Uh, before that, I was part of uh, NDS, uh, a company that uh, paved the way for uh, digital TV all around the world coming out of uh, uh, Jerusalem. And before that, I've been involved in startups both in Israel and, uh, and in the US. Uh, so that, that's in a nutshell what uh, my background, Alex. Thanks, Gadi. Um, so uh, um, uh, just to repeat, uh, I think, uh, you know, looking at, uh, at AI, you know, like from, from the perspective you gave uh, your eyes uh, is really impressive. It's, uh, it's been, it's been uh, a while coming and it's nice to see that it's actually here now. Um, so, um, you know, my, my name is Alex Zeltzer. I've been in the Israeli high tech industry for the past um, slightly over 10 years, 25 years. Uh, um, half of it in corporate and half of it in, uh, in startups. I started my career uh, in two pretty large corporates. One is uh, Converse, as a lot of my uh, fellow uh, engineers, I think, in the time. And, and, then, uh, and then went on to run uh, an Israeli branch of, uh, of a large uh, uh, French company called the Source Systems. Um, and since 2009, I've been uh, establishing and running companies. I've, uh, I've been in online groceries. Uh, I've been uh, uh, online, uh, online uh, or e-commerce, online shopping of uh, gift cards where we realized uh, the potential uh, hit of uh, fraud when, when selling such uh, uh, um, uh, fraudster attractive uh, uh, goods. And, and now with, uh, with Insure, where I'm, uh, I'm lucky to have uh, uh, got your eye and, uh, and disruptive team uh, on on my uh, on my side. Great. So maybe I think I'll pop up the as the first question just to push you down the hill, uh, Gadi. Uh, well, I remember our talks about insurance, and I, and I remember you very enthusiastic and very uh, looking into that uh, company, uh, and you find it very attractive. So maybe share with us uh, what what did you find so attractive with with insurance? Uh, yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, I guess it's something about my background that I really like fraud. Or to be more specific, I really like fraud prevention and anti-fraud uh, uh, technologies and, and startups. Actually, it goes back to my background. 
uh, at NDS, the company we, we started uh, in Jerusalem to fight digital piracy in pay TV. Effectively, we've been fighting against uh, fraudsters all around the world. When you work in fraud prevention, it's really fascinating because you're working against some of the smartest people out there. Uh, and usually these are not just simple hackers. These are people that are uh, financially motivated, very often uh, uh, very well financed. Uh, and the challenge of working and being a step ahead of them is, is one of the most uh, uh, attractive and interesting uh, challenges uh, one, can, one can pick in the technology world. So, so that was my early foyer into the uh, uh, fraud prevention world. Since then, I invested in, uh, in multiple cyber companies that are also fighting against uh, uh, hackers. I've been uh, the lead investor and the chairman of uh, uh, CyberArk. I uh, invested in fraud prevent a anti money laundering uh, companies like uh, Tenere. Uh, and when I joined the disruptive uh, AI, and um, you know, in, in our conversations, we've identified the potential of using AI technologies to fight fraud. Uh, when Ensure AI uh, came on our screen, it was uh, quite obvious to me and, and, and my other partners that that's uh, a deal that uh, uh, I will follow. Um, but I don't want to steal uh, Alex Thunder. And uh, uh, so, so maybe I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Alex, and t t tell us a little bit about the motivation for you and Ziv to actually establish Ensure to begin with. Yeah, so uh, uh, first of all, Gadi, thank you for the kind words. It's, uh, it's great to be, uh, you know, part of the team and, uh, and have you, uh, you know, as, uh, uh, as, as part of my team. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, and, it, and yeah, we, we learned our lesson as a, as a merchant, actually. Uh, you know, the type of fraud uh, uh, we solve is, is for merchants that, uh, that have bad actors trying to steal their goods online. Um, and both Ziv, who's uh, my partner and CTO here, and I were part of a business called Zeek just, uh, just before starting Insure. Uh, and Zeek was a, a gift card marketplace. You could buy and sell gift cards on that market. We were uh, uh, running uh, sales in, uh, in Europe, mostly in the UK and Germany. Um, and when we started our business there, uh, just when we went live in the UK, we uh, realized after a week that 40% of the transactions we saw online were fraudulent, meaning people were using stolen credit cards or debit cards to buy the cards. And then when the chargebacks started arriving, we lost, you know, we lost these sales. And, and for our new business, 40% of fraud is devastating. We, we actually shut down, uh, went back to understand why, what's going on, figured out that, uh, um, that we have to find a way to mitigate that. Um, established a number of uh, very, very, uh, uh, I would say, early stage tools. At, at the time, there was uh, almost no tools available to, uh, to fight that, uh, that uh, uh, level of fraud. And, and almost immediately decided to invest in it uh, significantly strategically to, uh, 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 to, to fight, the, to fight that, that pattern of fraud we've identified. Um, we realized pretty early on that you have to use AI. The, the, the uh, sophistication of the fraudsters and you know as you mentioned these are not individuals these are companies they they you know they they come to work in an office just as all of us do and and they speak for a living uh, and, and they and they make an roi decisions and they make informed decisions on how to do that they spend time on developing the tools um the ability for rule-based systems to cope with is simply impossible we realized that, established the team, started working it. Took us probably three years to get to a point where we felt we have a good, uh, a good solution at hand. Um, you know, Alex. So, uh, if, if, yeah, that, if I can interrupt for a second, it's it's interesting what you say about not being able to address the the issue just with a rule based system. You know, uh, with some of the companies that I've been exposed to in the cyber world and the uh, for prevention world, we have a saying that once you define a set of rules, you actually define the next attack because the fraudsters effectively will go around the rules uh, and, and establish their attack. So, uh, so to me, at least, it was very obvious why you have to use 
uh, deep AI, deep learning, machine learning, et cetera, to address the issue and always be ahead of the attackers. So, so maybe you can say also a few words about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the for the segue here. Uh, uh, for sure, it's um, what what we've learned is that. Uh, um, and by the way, we we still employ it today. When you know, uh, like any other fraud uh, prevention uh, system, we are being attacked on a daily basis, uh, and we see attacks every day. Some of the attacks, uh, unfortunately, go through. That's uh, you know, that's a, a statistical nature of AI. I think in general. And what we find is that if you try to mitigate it using rules just to feel safe for a while, they immediately overcome it. It's immediate. It's like uh, it takes you know it takes minutes for the for the attack to uh, find ways around. So we see that we, we we see this really on a daily basis, and we realize the only way uh, we saw that at Zeek, we see that today. The only way to really uh, uh, be able to prevent such uh, schemes is by providing enough data for the system to learn from enough data points where we're using today over 500 different features, uh, uh, which is something that obviously, you know, a person or, or you know, a, a human being is, it's impossible to try and process that, especially not in real time, of course. Uh, and by looking at this, uh, these vast amounts of data and by looking at the context of everything that's happening, not just that, you know, what kind of credit card is being used, um, well, or, or where is coming from, is the IP, uh, different is the credit card from a different company. Uh, uh, these are simple, simple uh, uh, things to look at. Without looking at the total context of what's going on, there's just no way to prevent this. And uh, and, and you know, we 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 spoke a lot about uh, um, about fraud prevention, I think. But uh, um, you know, if we if we take a step back for AI, if you don't mind me asking, uh, uh, what what kind of uh, uh, investment you're seeing? Obviously. Mm -hmm. We've done uh, um, we've done a lot of work uh, together, but you're seeing a lot more than just for prevention. What else are you seeing that's uh, really prevalent? Yeah, so so you know that's a question we get a lot because uh, you know obviously almost every startup we see these days is uh, is is attaching either a dot AI or some version of AI to to uh, its. Uh, is PS guilty as charged. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 the way we look at it is we've we've really uh, breaking it into if you wish three layers. Okay, at the very bottom layer, uh, you see uh, a very deep uh, infrastructure for AI. Uh, you know anything from hardware for AI, chips uh, uh, for AI, and, and other very uh, elaborate uh, general purpose uh, infrastructure. Okay, so that would be layer one. On top of that, uh, you would see other, mainly software frameworks that focus on particular features of AI, whether it's NLP, natural language processing, uh, voice recognition, predictive uh, analytics, things like that, that are general purpose frameworks that can be used uh, for multiple applications. And then I'd say at the top of the pyramid, and, and that's how I classify you guys as well at Mature, is, and for me, it's the most fascinating section of AI. And this is where AI meets a business need and where an application is created around uh, a certain business problem that can be resolved or solved uh, or figured out only with AI. You know? So what you do in Ensure is a very good example. I don't think um, uh, a simplistic rule-based example is valid to fight fraud uh, these days. Uh, and, and we've seen other similar cases for other applications, not just in finance, also in healthcare, uh, obviously in cyber, uh, in FinTech, mm -hmm. which is an area that we see uh, is that we see a lot. So uh, for us, uh, the interesting uh, part of AI investment right now is where the business meets the AI technology. And we're very fortunate right now in, in Israel that many of the entrepreneurs we see, and I'd say like you and, and Ziv, many of the entrepreneurs we see are at least second timers, if not third timer entrepreneurs, and they coming from the business. Uh, and, and for us, that's one of the most important predictors uh, of a successful startup. Uh, entrepreneurs that understand the business problem and then know how to harness the right technology, in our case, it would be 
around AI, and that's how we defined our fund um, to solve that a, a particular problem. Uh, another layer, which is all, almost kind of run side by side to the whole AI stack, is the data access uh, layer. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's interesting. You know, we 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 used to think about startup differentiation uh, as the technology they have still is very much, but I think more and more so we see differentiation around the startup access to data and where do you get your data sources. And, and I think you started to uh, allude to that, Alex. Maybe you can describe a little bit the amount of data that you guys have to process and the sources of data uh, and, and how do you get them and how do you manipulate them? Sure. Uh, uh, so I think, uh, you know, that's a, that's a key element. I think in machine learning, yeah, you know, eventually you're only as good as your data. Uh, it's true that you know, the algorithms that you develop around it and, and, and the feature selection and all of that, I don't, I don't want to put it to shame, but eventually it's, uh, it's about how accurate your data is, how accurately tagged it is, and how, uh, you know, what's, you, you know what your, what's the scope. And which is one of the first things we kind of had to, uh, had to uh, figure out when we started the business. Uh, um, so we had a very good baseline with Zeek. We, we, trans, uh, we, we transacted hundreds of millions of dollars uh, worth of gift cards to begin with. So we had a very good and sound kind of uh, 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 universe to start with. Uh, uh, but then we realized that the, the most important element in fraud prevention, in payment fraud prevention, is balancing out what we call, uh, uh, well, you know, in AI, it's simple false positives and false negatives. But the meaning in our world is how many legitimate buyers are you declining? So you're not letting them buy. And on the other hand, how many bad actors are going through and then eventually being charged back? So what we're really looking is a way to balance that. There, there, it's, it's very easy to have zero fraud. You stop transact, right? You do zero transactions, no business, there's zero fraud. And by the way, statistically, the only way to do that. Once you realize that that's what you're trying to do, you realize that there's a balance. And then you start to look what are the most important data elements that you need. What of them can you gain yourself? And what of it do you need to get you know, help from the network? And what we found is that uh, for, for, for our business, in order to, uh, to be able to achieve the level of, uh, uh, I would say, the level of accuracy that is required for selling digital goods, which is you know, where, our, uh, where our, uh, our, our segment, the segment we, we focus on is, uh, um, there is an area that, that, that I alluded to before, which is the context of the transaction. You have mm -hmm. to understand everything about it. You have to understand the consumer behavior before that. What did he purchase? Um, the entire purchase history is important. What did he do before? Where did he come from? All of that is important. Beyond that, we're looking at the behavior analytics, which I think is extremely essential. We're looking at how fast would a person go through the website? Would he key in the password or copy paste it, et cetera? And then we use the network effect. We're using uh, a, a lot of services around there that would give you small pieces of data that would, uh, um, that we call it uh, you know, data enhancement. Uh, that will give you additional pieces of data that we find extremely important. And with all of that, as I mentioned, over 500 different features that we take into consideration on a per transaction basis before we decide okay. whether to approve or reach. So, so that, that's something that I found quite challenging with what you do, because maybe we should explain that better. It's the, the challenge you guys decided to tackle is not just to stop fraud for uh, e-commerce and uh, kind of uh, uh, physical goods, but you decided to try and stop fraud for digital goods, which means that the inventory you deal with is completely virtual. It can be exactly. transferable very easily and you have to stop it immediately, effectively in real time. So I assume that, exactly. that introduced another set of, of uh, challenges for you guys. And how do you tackle that element? Exactly, Vladi, exactly. As, uh, um, so as I mentioned, our, our segment, the segment we really tackle is, is digital goods. Digital goods is anything, as you mentioned, that is delivered immediately, not to an address, but to an email, to a text message, to a WhatsApp, and then can be resold online. These are the, the, these are the types of goods we're dealing with. And it's fairly easy to understand. These are very attractive to fraudsters because they can perpetrate fraud at scale. And, and what we found is that the immediacy, you lose value immediately. As soon as you make the decision to purchase or to 
allow a person to purchase, you lose the value. Because of that immediacy, you need to be as accurate as possible. I'm not going to go into the details, and I see uh, uh, Yorai here uh, uh, mentioning that we need to conclude, but some of the you know secret sauce to what we're doing is exactly that, being able to take the decision in real time uh, and still be accurate enough not to, uh, you know, not to decline too many goods. Alex, I want to, uh, I want to thank you for that. Actually, I, I have a list of, of many more questions that I wanted to ask you uh, and share, share with the audience. Uh, but I guess you're right. We, if we see you on the screen, I guess we'll have to leave that for next time. Yeah. Uh, I think it's gonna, we're going to have to save some uh, stuff uh, for the next time. It was, uh, you know, I know the company, I know everything uh, from advance, but it was great to hear it. And it was uh, very insightful. I think uh, people uh, may understand now the, the complexity, but the importance of using AI in cases where uh, an online decision should be taken and where a large data, a huge data is involved. And uh, this is why I think Ensure is a great company for, for, that, uh, for that purpose. And I thank you both for taking uh, part uh, with the future of AI. It, uh, it is great, great to be uh, to be part of it and uh, looking forward for the, you know, the physical event, physical presence events, maybe yeah. over, I think. Hopefully soon. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.